was a nice episode to get my thoughts up on this season going after the premiere, because I wasn't feeling that great after the premiere, but this episode, yeah, I liked it. It was a nice episode. Interactions were a lot better, in my opinion. Yeah, there were a lot more question marks in my mind. I, my feelings on who would go and how I felt about it were higher, and we actually got some stuff that didn't have to do with just playing strategy for the first time in a while. That'd be good. So, everyone shows up at the beach, and then Jeff goes, Okay, how savvy are you guys? What is happening right now? And I really like that he did that, because I've been saying for a long time, if you're still shocked that... You know, tribe shuffles, switches, whatever you want to call them, happen. Come on, it's time for you to wise up. Although, I think people still are getting used to um, it happening this early in the game. Yeah. So that might have surprised them, but given the patterns of this season pulls over from Cambodia and the Millennials with Gen X, it looks like this expansion and... Uh, points where the merge and jury stone are going to be regular things, which isn't entirely a bad thing, because I much rather would have a 10 people than, um, 8 people, because that makes the tie situation seem a little less likely in my mind, even though, you know, it could still be perfectly even, right? So it was interesting to see how, um, barely anyone stayed on their old tribes, and though everyone was being, you know, outranked by somebody from the other tribes, because the orange tribe was four blue tribe members and two oranges, and it was interesting how all of them were basically, you know, the people that we were questioning. Why the heck are these people back, you know? And then the blue tribe, JT's on the minority, with all those pe- Both from the other tribe, and then... There's, um, Choice and who's in the reverse situation. Just, <laughs> nice. That was interesting, yeah. <laughs> so the interactions that are going on on those tribes, well, JT and Choice and get pushed away, and I was a little bit bummed by that because... <sighs> I didn't really want them, you know, to be an ostracized just because they ended up being, you know, the odd person out, although people will say that, you know, I'm cherry picking here because I actually wasn't complaining at all for that same situation happening to Caleb and Haley on um, the Orange tribe, so yeah. <laughs> Definitely being a little hypocritical there, but as um, either Rob or Steven or Jeff pointed out that people end up having these hypocritical bits all the time, and I've been saying for a long time, people say that you can't cherry pick? I actually think it's human nature to cherry pick, yeah. So that's how I felt about that stuff, but then Choizen, you know, goes for his quest to um, find the idol, and I was actually pretty glad that he ended up getting it, because that has the potential to have some drama down the line. Well, so JT, I think there's a decent chance that, um, He'll be able to work them socially and might actually get himself into a nice position. Unlike Troizan, who, even though he has the ability to do it, his personality doesn't add up to it like it does for JT, right? <laughs> then as for the Orange Tribe, it was interesting to see um, Brad and Sierra, you know, continue to um, open themselves up. Because, like, Brad, like... Who would have thought, based on what he was doing at Worlds Apart, that, you know, he actually, you know, has a good dog in up there, and actually, you know, has the ability to manipulate things and do it all very, well, reasonably smoothly, that is, yeah. But I had been believing, ever since I saw his exit interviews with Pav back in the day, that, you know, he actually might just be able to do it, well... Yeah, I'm really curious to see where this guy goes. And then Sierra. She isn't um, doing too much. She's doing about what she did last time. But you get the idea that um, it's more streamlined. There's some more reason for why she's doing what she's doing. And there's not nearly as many um, guys mouthing off. Or even though there's definitely some guys doing the mouthing off business. No one near the same kind of mouthing off. So, hmm. <laughs> I want to see what happens to her, and hopefully we can actually have a Sierra this season, you know, um, make an impact, because, yeah, 
It's, I'm still a little bit bummed that a Sierra was boo the other Sierra was booted so early because I had wanted to figure out where I stood with her, unlike with Sharin, I didn't get that opportunity, yeah. So we'll see how she Lords Apart Sierra does, right? And then as for the uh, goat bit, I don't get why it seems like a lot of people were complaining about this scene. This is the kind of thing that a lot of people out there have been crying that survivors should be showing us for a long time now. Closest we've got to this is everyone complaining about the weather in Philippines, Caramon, Cambodia, and a little bit of complaining about how San Juan del Sur was just like a barren wasteland. Yeah, so, <laughs> come on. Oh yeah, then there's the heat in Koran, sorry. <laughs> right. But yeah, I would have... I followed the train of um, Malcolm and everyone but Sandra. They're like, oh yeah, 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 get the goat, yeah. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah. So I was glad that they uh, let them go, and as they pointed out, they uh, do have other resources. Yeah, so... This tribe doesn't need to worry about it. They have the potential to take just about any thing at this point because, you know, they've got the strength or as the green tribe has a good amount of the strength or as orange tribe, I don't think they got too much of it even though they do have Caleb and Brad who are all alpha males, yeah. So the, um, that immunity challenge, given how much they were showing, um, uh, Choice and looking over his shoulder, I predicted that um, the green tribe wouldn't get first, and based on how the other two tribes were behaving, I'm like, okay, blue's definitely winning this, odds uh, are green will win this, but it could not work out that way. But sure enough, the green tribe ended up managing to pull it out, which I was glad to see, and good eye to grab by Choice and yeah. So then, uh, the Orange Tribe, it ends up becoming a little bit of a Koran battle. Even though, um, Haley, you know, is still on the, uh, radar of, um, the original Blue Tribe members. And there's interesting arguments as to whether or not to keep her over Caleb. And, like, Caleb did actually a very interesting job of that at Tribal. C continuing what I said, honesty seems to actually be the way things work now. People say whatever it is on their minds, even though it doesn't necessarily, um, do well for them. But, for whatever reason, we cross to a point where actually that seems to help them. I don't know, they might have done some of this in Old School Survivor, but I wasn't nearly good enough at picking up social hints back. Then it's gonna be real tough for me to watch those seasons. Oh man, right. So they go up to vote. I had been thinking that Haley would go, but it ended up being Caleb. And I'll be honest, even though um, I did my complaining about Caleb in uh, my thoughts on this cast video, I did feel a little bit sorry for him because, you know, he got it stuck to him by Ty. Uh, kind of how um, he sort of stuck it to Scott, you know, back in Koran. And... He got booted the same day that he left last time, albeit this time, you know, he actually went to a few tribals, but that's so interesting, because he doesn't lose any challenges on his first season, and then he gets, you know, airlifted. Here, he doesn't win any challenges, and he goes on the same day. It's just crazy, huh? Right. So, um, I do feel a little bit sorry for him, but until I get a better apology than what I got when it comes to, um, the uh, homophobic remarks that he's made, I don't think I'm ever gonna totally, uh, like this guy again, and I gotta be honest with you, John Rocker from Samuel Del Sur actually did a much better job of apologizing for his actions than Jeff Schroeder or Caleb did, even though, I, ironically, at the same time, he is the person who said the least of, in terms of, uh, if I apologize, but given the amount of social relationships he was actually able to form after his season, you get the idea that every, that he's put it all past him, so, that's real interesting. So, then we got this teaser for next week, and what do I think of the, uh, twist? Well... I think Jeff might be taking a page from International Versions of Survivor for once. Interesting. And no, I didn't watch the whole season, I only saw the first third of it, and I actually need to re-watch that, but I think you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> See ya.